you know, it would really make me and the Ultra Ball happy as hell if you could go and watch our Flunderies deck profile that we just posted yesterday. It's only got 29 views right now, so could you maybe please make my ball nice and happy and enlarged and if if it's this large, you probably got some cancer. And go and give it some views, please. I talk about my matchups because it, it was a fun regional until I got my shit pushed in. And I would have beat Cody Angeloff if he didn't open Zombie World. Game three. Fuck Zombie World. In the hole. Yeah, I'm talking to you. This is a good looking ultra ball. Make sure you smash the ever living crap out of that subscribe button as we work our way on up to 800 and eventually 1,000 subscribers. I feel like a fucking idiot doing that, but whatever, it, it spices up the video. What's going on, you guys? It's your boy Avery here, and I have a very interesting discussion video for you today, and that is what separates the OCG from the TCG, and I think that this is the biggest thing that I've seen nobody talk about and I didn't even think about until I was at the Georgia Regional. So... When I was at the regional, I was talking with a guy who only lived a couple hours away from the area and, you know, just talking to players at the event, you know, advertising my channel, you know, all that, all that fun PR crap. Um, and he talked about how he is in the military and how he was living in South Korea for a time. Now, for those of you who don't know, South Korea, Vietnam, those are Asian countries that fall under the OCG umbrella. So they play by the OCG rules, the OCG metagame, things like that. And there were some things that this guy told me about that I actually thought was really interesting in regards to the OCG. The first thing was that with their format, since they're several months ahead of us, I have to make sure I keep this right because I'm talking about OCG, not TCG. They are several months ahead of us compared to the TCG. So what he said was that, number one, they use English cards there, which I thought was really interesting. And number two, he said that they use English cards and of course, some of their own language cards to play our format because they consider our format, quote unquote, goat format. And the reason why is because the meta that we have is months old to them because they're ahead of us. So if they want to play like our ban list, it's cheap for them because the cards have already been out for a while. So they don't cost as much. So that's like their way of playing like a retro format or like a goat format uh, is the way that he described it to me. It's like they see our format as like goat format. Um, and, you know, they play our format and things like that. And it's, it's really, really interesting to hear that, especially in an OCG community. Now, what's different in the OCG uh, is not only their ban list, number one, but also the type of decks that they play. And I asked him about this and I said, you know, why is it that, you know, yeah, we have different ban lists and things, but why is it that, you know, decks like Eldritch and even stuff like burn decks just don't see a lot of play there? And what was interesting was that he said that the card shops in OCG countries, so we're talking Japan, China, Korea, Vietnam, places like that, they have a lot more leverage when it comes to decks and cards that can be played. And on top of that too, in Asian countries especially, especially in, in countries like Japan and China, they have, or rather not they have, but they are very big on what is basically what we're going to call for this case an honor system. So if you've ever played a video game, I hate to quote it this way, but it really proves the point and pushes it home. If you've ever played a video game like Ghost of Tsushima, if I could talk today, Ghost of Tsushima, try saying that 10 times fast. And, you know, Samurais were big in Japan years ago. They're big on honor. Well, a lot of these OCG Asian countries are apparently very big on the honor system. And what he told me was that OCG countries see decks like Set 5 Eldritch, um, Burn decks, Mystic Mind Stall, Final Countdown as unhonorable decks or dishonorable, whatever the term would need to be properly for that sentence. They see those decks as like unhonorable, um, like you're, you're a dick if you play decks like that. And to them, 
that's something very serious compared to us here in the TCG. If you gave us three macro, three D Fisher, and three skill drain, like what they have in the OCG, you're going to have a whole bunch of people playing those cards at three in one deck. Like it's going to be an absolute shit show. But over there, it's not as big because in their culture, that's just not something you do. Now, if you remember when Mystic Mine was out in the OCG, I believe it had just came out and it was really racking up some wins over the, in the OCG, specifically Japan. We started seeing screenshots, um, pictures that people were taking from OCG stores, specifically in Japan, that had signs up on their front door saying that you're not allowed to use Mystic Mine, you're not allowed to use Mystic Mine burn decks at our tournament. And the OCG, they do this kind of stuff like all the time, apparently. Like this is just something that is normal. Whereas with us here in the TCG, you wouldn't have a card shop banning a certain deck because if the deck's legal to play, it's going to be legal to play. Um, and the other thing that I thought was interesting along with that was that this guy was telling me that he went to a local card shop there when he was in South Korea and he was playing Eldritch. He didn't have like all of his cards with him. They didn't come in the mail or something like that. Anyway, point is that he was playing like set five Eldritch. And he said people were getting pissed. Like he was wrecking them in their own format, but the people there were getting pissed. And the translator told him that it's because that they see your deck as unhonorable or dishonorable, you know, what whatever the word is. They don't see it as honorable. And they think that you're an asshole basically for playing that deck. And car, the, the card shop owners could say, you know, hey, you're not allowed to play an Eldritch set five back row deck. You're not allowed to play Mystic Mine Burn. And in Japan, when they were banning Mystic Mine outright, these local card shops, then eventually Konami did ban Mystic Mine and now it's banned over there. And so it's just such an interesting dynamic to see in the OCG that honor and integrity and uh, basically not being a dick in a card game go so far to totally warp their format and change how their game is played. And it really makes me wonder, could you take a deck into the OCG where they have three D Fisher, three macro, three skill drain, and just wreck everybody with it, but yet no one's playing it because of an honor system. Whereas we here in America don't give a shit about that. You give us three skill drain, look at what Eldritch is doing. Eldritch instantaneously overnight became a solid tier 1.5 to tier one deck. And it's astounding because, you know, people, as I've even seen article writers on TCG players say, you use every aspect of the game you can, cards and rules and all, to get yourself that win within the rules and constructs of the game. And to see a game run in a way, to a degree, on an honor system, because you don't want to be seen as a dick, because it's that important to them in their culture is really, really interesting. And it's, I think, something that needs to be thought about when we look at formats and ban lists going forward in the OCG that, you know, yes, they're going to have similar problems to us no matter what. You know, the Brave Engine, they went from two copies of Aramis or Water Enchantress down to one. Um, but what I think is also interesting is the fact that what is the line in the OCG? And, and for any of you who are OCG players that see this video, please leave a comment and tell me, what is the line that you draw in the sand where card shop owners say, okay, the Brave Engine's allowed, but Sky Striker is not? Like, where where is the difference? Where is the line that you draw? Because if you think about it, you can make that argument for any card or any deck in Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, uh, we don't want branded at our card shop. Well, it's, it's a meta deck though. Well, yeah, but I'm the card shop owner. So, you know, you're not allowed to play branded, but you can play Mystic Mind Burn. You can play Final Countdown uh, or the next week. You can't play Sky Striker, but you can play Light Sworn and Gladiator Beast. Like what's, what's, the, what's the give and take in this system here as me from the outside looking in as a TCG player? It just, it seems like it's something that could just change on a dime, you know, like, like what's going to happen in like, you know, Japan, Gladiator Beast, just run it back and win an event out of nowhere. And all of a sudden all the card shops say, okay, you're not allowed to play Gladiator Beast. Like, could you imagine if that happened here in the TCG? Like, let's say I go to my local OTS, uh, let's say self-destruct button was at three, because if you're a veteran on this channel, you know, self-destruct button is one of my favorite decks. And I go in there trolling with self-destruct button. If my, if my local OTS said, okay, you're no longer allowed to place the self-destruct button card or any self-destruct button base decks at our locals, I wouldn't go there anymore. anymore. Like I, I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't buy cards. I wouldn't participate in tournaments. Like it, it would really dis detract me away as a TCG player. And it makes me wonder how these OCG card shops can stay afloat if, you know, uh, a cheesy deck comes into the meta and, you know, they say, oh, you're not allowed to play this deck here. Well, you know, is it just a matter of, well, I have nowhere else to go, so I guess I can't play that here? Really, really interesting. And it's it's something that's just, to me, as an American player in the TCG, it's such a strange concept. So please, if you're an OCG player or you have any experience playing in OCG territories, please leave a comment down below and tell me because I, I really think that this is an interesting concept that I think people really need to keep in mind and consider at least to a degree moving forward and looking at OCG balance and why they aren't playing cards that really seem busted in today's game. Like, I think they even have three final countdown there. I could be wrong, but shit, I would love to play a deck with three final countdown. That'd be bonkers. So guys, please let me know in the comments below what you think about all this and more. Be sure to like the video, hit the subscribe button and the bell, and I will see you guys in the next video.